last month we started web streaming, you know, where you can watch the meeting live on the web, and they updated the, um, the software. So this is the first time that we've used the live Good evening, and welcome to the Carnegie Town Hall. The regular meeting of the City Planning Commission will be called to order, and we will begin with a few introductory remarks. The City of Sioux Falls Planning Commission serves as an Oops. advisory board to the City Council. It is the responsibility of the Planning Commission to consider and make recommendation on land use and zoning matters. Conditional use permits and minor amendment requests will have final action here this evening unless appealed to the City Council in writing within five days. Any decision made on preliminary subdivision plans or future land use amendment requests tonight will be referred to the City Council for final action at the third council meeting of the month. Any decision made on rezoning requests, major amendments, or ordinance amendments tonight will be referred to the City Council for final action at the first council meeting of the month. 
Council meetings are held at 7 p.m. here in the Carnegie Town Hall and are televised. Any action taken here tonight on a final development plan is final. The Planning Commission will first approve the consent agenda and then the regular agenda. In order to place certain non-controversial items on the Commission's consent agenda, planning staff and the Planning Commission applies the following criteria. First, the request conforms with the City 2015 Land Use Plan. Second, the planning staff recommends approval of the request. And third, there are no audience members present or written comments received in opposition to the request. And fourth, the application meets all conditions and requirements of the ordinance. Once the consent agenda items are approved, you are free to leave. For the regular agenda, the following normal public hearing procedure will be followed. By first requesting planning staff to present a brief report on each item. Second, the petitioner will be requested to come forward and make a statement or answer questions. After the petitioner, anyone from the audience who wishes to address a particular agenda item shall be recognized. Then, the Planning Commission will discuss the matter further and take appropriate action. We ask that anyone addressing the Planning Commission other than staff move to the podium microphone, identify themselves, and state their address for the record. Please limit your comments to less than five minutes. As a courtesy to everyone here tonight, we ask you please either turn off or silence your cell phone and pager. This meeting is being televised on Channel 16 and will be rebroadcast Saturday at 10 a.m., Tuesday at 7 p.m., and Wednesday at 1 a.m. Thank you for your cooperation. Good evening and welcome to uh, the Carnegie Town Hall. I am filling in this evening for uh, Commission Chair Kent Metzger, and I call this uh, to order this regular meeting of the City Planning Commission and we'll begin with a few introductory remarks. The City of Sioux Falls Planning Commission serves as an advisory board to the City Council. It is the responsibility of the Planning Commission to consider and make recommendations on land use and zoning matters. Any final action on conditional use permit or minor amendment requests taken here tonight are final unless appealed to the City Council. Any final action taken here tonight on preliminary subdivision plans will be referred to the City Council for their public hearing on October 15, 2007 at 7 p.m. Any final action on zoning requests, major amendments or ordinance amendments taken here tonight will be referred to the City Council for their public hearing on Monday, November 5th at 7 p.m. Council meetings are held here in the Carnegie Town Hall and these meetings, public hearings are also televised. Any final action taken here tonight on a final development plan for a planned development district is final. At this time, the Planning Commission will approve the consent agenda and the regular agenda. In order to place certain non-controversial items on the Commission's consent agenda, planning staff and the Planning Commission apply the following criteria. First, the request conforms with the City's 2015 land use plan. Second, the planning staff recommends approval of the request. Third, there are no audience members present or written comments received in opposition to the request. And the uh, application meets all conditions and requirements of the ordinance. To begin, I will read the consent agenda. Number one would be the approval of the September 5th, 2007 minutes of the regular meeting. Number two would be approval of plats. Number three would be item 2007-06-31, a rezone from Ag Agricultural District to the O Office District to allow office development at West 77th Street and South Minnesota Avenue. Item number four is item 2007-8-34, a rezone RD, residential district, to 41st Street, 10 PD, planned development district, subarea A, for development of townhomes, located at West 41st Street and South Grinnell Avenue. Item number five 
Item 2007-09-12, a rezone from AG Agricultural District to Shadow Creek Plan Development District to allow sports and medical uses. This is located at the northeast corner of 73rd Street and South Cliff Avenue, the future 73rd Street. <coughs> Item number six is a major amendment Petition number 2007-90904 to Chapter 15-45-070, Plan Development Districts, Subarea 1, Beetle Greenway PD, allowing changes in land use as reflected in the revised subarea regulations and amended, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls at East 14th Street. That is, yes, at East 14th Street. Item number seven, uh, petition number 2007-09-09, conditional use permit in the C3 commercial business district to allow an on-sale alcohol establishment as a, an accessory use to a restaurant at 309 South Phillips Avenue. Item number eight, Petition number 2007-09-02, Final Development Plan in Subarea W, <coughs> Platinum Valley Plan Development District to allow construction of fourplexes <coughs> at West 93rd Street and Hughes Avenue. And finally, item 9, petition number 2007-09-03, a Final Development Plan in Subarea D, Northridge Plan Development District to allow construction of a 48 multifamily dwellings at 2007 North Career Avenue. Are there any objections from the audience to any item listed on the consent agenda? Mr. Chair, um, Shauna Goldhammer representing planning staff this evening. We have received an, uh, phone calls of opposition to item number nine on the consent agenda. Neighboring property owners would like the opportunity to put in public testimony tonight, so we'd ask that item nine be moved from the consent agenda to the regular agenda. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other objections to the items on the consent agenda? Hearing none, are there any objections from the commission to the items and the comments made by staff regarding the consent agenda? Hearing none, uh, I would entertain a motion for uh, the uh, approval of the consent agenda. Mr. Sure. Chair, I'll move for approval of the consent agenda, uh, amending it to move item nine to the regular I second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval of the consent agenda with the uh, one modification signify by saying yes. 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 Okay, the consent agenda has been uh, approved. Those of you that had items on the consent agenda tonight are uh, free to go or you could stay. <laughs> we have a few uh, more pieces of business. Uh, that having been said, I will uh, go through the uh, regular agenda, and we'll get that uh, approved and, uh, and move forward here. Number 10, item number 10 is a resolution amending the future land use map as part of the Sioux Falls 2015 Growth Management Plan petition number 2007-08-16 at northwest corner of Benson Road, Marion Road from the single family residential and multifamily residential land uses to an allocation of commercial office, institutional, multifamily, and single family residential future land uses. Item number 11 is an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls rezoning property at North Dubuque Avenue and East 6th Street from the AG Agricultural District to the RS2 Residential District. The RC Recreational Conservation District and the Wild, at the, and the Wild Meadows Plan Development District, petition number 2007-08-11 and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Item number 12 is a major amendment 
Petition Number 2007-09-08 to Chapter 15.45.070, Plan Development Districts in Subarea A and B at Heather Ridge 2, Plan Development District, allowing changes in land uses reflected in the revised subarea rec regulations and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls at Western Avenue and South Grand Arbor Court. Item 13, petition number 2007-09-05 is a conditional use permit in S Institutional District to allow official or <coughs> office use for Bright Start home visiting nurses at 4402 East 3rd Street. Item 14 is uh, petition number 2007-09-13, conditional use permit in the C2 General Commercial District to allow motor vehicle display and sales at 4201 East 10th Street. Item 15 is a final development plan, uh, petition number 2007-08-22, in subarea C of Air McKinnon Plan Development District to allow construction of an extended stay hotel at South 7th Avenue and East 24th Street. Item 16 is petition 2000. 709-07, a final development plan in subarea E, Granite Valley PD, plan development district to construct a manufacturing building at East Dyke Road and North Subert Avenue. Item 17 is a resolution of the City of Sioux Falls approving the preliminary plan of Wild Meadows Edition, a residential subdivision at East Madison and North Dubuque Avenue. And item eight, 19, or excuse me, 18 is an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending Appendix B, the zoning ordinance, by adding land uses to the Neighborhood Commercial Zoning District. Item 19 tonight is adjournment. Are there, uh, any, is there anyone from the audience that would uh, like to change anything regarding the regular agenda tonight? Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the applicant for item number 16, the final development plan in Granite Valley PD, has requested a 30-day deferral. So staff um, asks that 16 is deferred until the November meeting. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any uh, changes that the uh, commission would like to make regarding the uh, regular agenda? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the regular agenda? I'll move to approve the regular agenda with item 9 moved from consent into the regular agenda and item 16 deferred. I'll second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion regarding the uh, amended agenda. Hearing none, all those in favor of the uh, regular agenda signify by saying yes. 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 Thank you. Okay. Um, as a courtesy to everyone here tonight, uh, we would ask that you also turn off or silence your cell phone. And, of course, this uh, meeting is being televised in Channel 16, and uh, we thank you for your cooperation. And uh, staff, would you come forward and make the uh, staff report for item number nine? Yes. Item nine is a final development plan in subarea D, North Ridge Plan Development District, to allow construction of uh, 48 multifamily dwelling units. The applicant is proposing to construct an apartment that has 48 dwelling units. Uh, the North Ridge Plan Development District was created in 1998. However, this is the first final development plan request within this plan development district. Single family residential is developing in the area, which does not require a final development plan or a public hearing before this body. The site location is on the west side of North Career, approximately one quarter mile north of West Maple Street. Access is from the driveway, which will extend from Career and then extend in a northwesterly manner. The Northridge Plan Development, or excuse me, the Northridge Preliminary Subdivision Plan was approved in 2004 for street alignment and lot and block layout. For parking and parking providing, 
provided on the site plan. The plan requires 72 spaces uh, indicated on the unit mix, that is how many one and two bedroom apartments there are within the structure. The plan does reflect 107 surface parking spaces and 65 underground spaces. So they have plenty of parking. Landscaping includes turf grass with 32 trees, and those are indicated on a landscaping plan provided. The type of sto uh, structure is a three-story, 48-unit apartment building. Exterior wall materials include horizontal handy plank siding with split face block wainscoat. The roof is pitched and has asphalt shingles. Uh, the 16 points included in your packets indicate that the final development plan is a complete application. Because the application provides for the opportunity for public input as to the site design, staff does recommend approval of the final development plan with one stipulation and that sidewalks are required in all public streets. And that concludes staff report. Thank you, Shauna. Any questions for Shauna? Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a question regarding the uh, uh, part about zoning purpose and history. This particular piece of land was was uh, <clears throat> turned into a PD in 1988. Is that what I, or 1980, 1998? Is that what I understand? Correct, 1998. So this is this has been a, a PD since that time. Correct, and the land use that is multifamily land use has been allowed since then right. okay. for Thank nearly you. 10 years. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Shana. Is the petitioner here? <coughs> Dale Jans, 300 North Phillips Avenue. Uh, I think Shauna pretty well explained what the uh, project is when we purchased that property about six months ago. Uh, that's what we were told it was intended to be used for was multifamily, and so we've met all the requirements, made all the submittals to the city. Uh, I think there was a question at one point in time whether or not this property would have access to the residential street on the west. It does not. Uh, the access is off a of career and uh, all the issues with drainage and everything else have been addressed with the city. So just here to answer any questions if you have them. Any questions for Dale? Mr. Chair, Dale, it indicates you've got a dedicated, dedicated drainage channel along uh, which I think would be the south edge of that. How, how wide a channel is that? I can't give you an exact dimension, but that's been there for quite some time. I'm going to say it's probably 50 feet wide. Thank you, Dale. So that is not just for this piece of property. That also handles water from some property east of Career? Correct. Any other questions for Dale? Thank you, Dale. Okay, anybody from the audience uh, at this time uh, come forward to address item 9? State your name and your address, please. Good evening. My name is Deborah Mulholland. My address is 4508 West Pat Street. Um, some of my, myself included and some of the other um, single home uh, residents in the area were quite concerned that um, a driveway was going to be constructed um, despite what plans um, may have already been in because of the fact that um, the, the traffic, the extreme heavy flow of traffic and trucks that um, are constantly putting our children's lives in danger every day. Um, they come in off of career on Pat Street and they follow Pat Street through, which is all, it's single homes on one side of the street, the other side has yet to be developed, down to Vincent Street along those single homes. Um, there are four homes and there are uh, eight children between those four homes. Um, just, just between what's on Pad Street and the first home that you come to on Vincent before these trucks enter um, this drive that they're making through Vincent up along the rear, no, behind, if you go up, and they're going up through the property in the back. Um, 
And so, of course, because there's this made driveway from all of the traffic, um, and I'm not talking about just 10 trucks a day. It's all day long um, because they're not using any entrance on and off of career. Um, we're, we're, of course, as residents, we're going, no, look, they've made a driveway. They're driving it, they're using it, and they're coming through the single family homes all day long instead of just going in off of career. So I don't understand if they're planning to make a driveway on career, why they haven't done that and why they aren't using that instead of putting the, the children in danger. Um, we're talking about the huge trucks with those um, tunnel type pipes. It, you know, it looks like they're moving a small version of the Holland Tunnel, which we know they need to do, but why come through the single homes instead of just going in off of career? I realize it's paved, but you have to tell the people not to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're, we are concerned. And we were not given seven days notice um, for this final meeting. We were only, it was only posted on the 28th, which is only six days. Um, so a lot of the residents were concerned that we had no idea what was going on. Um, a lot of us have just purchased in the area and have just moved to this area and are learning about this. and not even giving enough time for us to group together as residents to be able to talk with the Jans Corporation and say, you know, could you guys go in off career? If, if you're not, otherwise, are you making a driveway here? And can we talk about it? That's what it looks like to us. Thank you. So your primary concern is the, the traffic uh, and whether or not there will be any connection to Vincent? Right. Our primary concern is um, our two concerns are that there be um, that the the traffic for the apartments and and that come in and exit onto career that they enter and exit onto career that there's no through traffic into the single family homes um, we would have issue because if you see there's um, Later on, there's uh, a future planning for a future drive and future parking and future buildings. So there are more dwellings yet to be constructed here. Um, what, we under what we understood is that there's, um, you know, there's easily parking. If, if we were told correct, there's easy parking for approximately 300. We don't want 300 cars coming through a single family resi residential area, scooting out and blocking any bus traffic that comes to pick up the children. Yeah. Any, any questions uh, of the commission uh, for Deborah? Deborah, I, I believe, from talking to the petitioner, I believe the only entrance and exit is going to be on career. Kind of sounds like those might be cement trucks that you see going up and down your street. No, Ken. Um, we're used to seeing the United Concrete Truck, the big, huge concrete truck. We're used to seeing those. In fact, um, they just came, and and we had a, uh, a we're having a, a shed built, so um, which we did our building permit for. And, but we're used to it because it is still developing. Um, uh, as far as our area, we're, they're still building the single-family homes there daily. We're used to the concrete trucks. We're not used to um, trucks that are carrying panels. Um, they look like preformed concrete panels that are as high as this initial ceiling. These are the trucks that are coming in the single-family development. Um, the, we're talking about those enormous prefab um, concrete tunnels, portions of that. This is what's coming through. Um, if, if, a, if a car was parked on, um, if a car was parked on either side of Pat Street, these trucks will continue to squeeze on through, and they may take somebody's mirror, doorknob, bumper with them. Um, I just 
think that it's about time that Jan's Corporation, you know, put the driveways in to go off of career. Any other questions of Deborah? Thank you. Thank you. It might make sense, uh, Dale, for you to come up and address some of the concerns regarding access uh, and yeah, I think, as was stated earlier, the only access point from a permanent standpoint is off a of career. Mm -hmm. There is probably some <clears throat> temporary construction traffic that comes in on that street because that's the closest access point. Career, the access point there is under construction, and as soon as that is completed, as soon as the paving is done, utility work's been completed, and that's the next thing is to do the paving. As soon as that's done, that's where all the traffic access will be. So that's a relatively short time frame that there will be any temporary construction. Dale, uh, so, uh, Ken, go ahead. Mr. Chair, Dale, when you do phase two of this or the south portion of this, is the intention then still to have that same entrance and exit? Correct. For both phases yep. out on career only? Yep. Thank you. Dale, you're saying short term. What are you, four weeks, ten weeks? I would say less than four weeks. Okay. Depends on what the weather does to us, but conceivably two weeks. Okay. I assume the, the uh, materials she's talking about are manholes or culvert sections, precast it, culverts. There's two possibilities. The, uh, the floor system over the parking garage is precast double T's, mm -hmm. so it could be that, or it could be culvert sections okay. for the driveways that we're putting over that drainage ditch. Any other questions for Dale? I just, I just have one more. Dale, is there any way currently they can access your property without going through this residential area? It would be pretty difficult until we get that street put in. We obviously can't drive through that street while it's under construction. But as soon as that's in, that's where the access will be. Okay. And we can certainly try to limit, you know, any big traffic, but they've got to be able to get those trucks in, and when that's under construction, it's pretty difficult to do. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Dale? Thank you, Dale. Anyone else from the audience care to address this item? <coughs> Hearing none, commission action. I'll move for approval with for item nine with the one stipulation. I second. We have a motion and a second for approval of the final development plan with a single stipulation. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Motion passes. Okay, the next item on the uh, regular agenda will be item 10. Uh, staff, report please. Good evening, uh, my name is Steve Randolph. I'll be representing staff on this item and other items tonight. <clears throat> the future land use amendment uh, applicants and owners are represented by Steve Van Busker, Hazeltine Partners. It's a 156 acre site and is currently agricultural. In future land use amendments, we're amending the comprehensive plan for the city of Sioux Falls future land use. There are five items addressed in the application form. Those are indicated in your staff report. Briefly summarize the petitioner's <clears throat> excuse me, information that's provided. Uh, the petitioner states that it's consistent uh, land use with higher traffic roadways of Benson and Marion Road and is conforming to access standards uh, proposed by the City of Sioux Falls. Both Benson and Marion Road are arterial roadways and therefore access is limited. Uh, the applicant is prepared to present to you a mix of land uses that would be appropriate on the property. Our current uh, land use designations limit the number of uses that can be indicated on the plan, but I believe the petitioner would like to talk to you about a mix of land uses. Applicant has stated that market conditions are determining uh, the need for these land uses and they should facilitate a larger need of the community as well. Applicant states that consistent growth is mandated by the ordinances uh, that they will be in compliance with and that they are addressing arterial roadways, access points, limited subdivision connectivity, land use transitions, and community connectivity all at the same time. 
I believe they're looking at a definition of what they call an employment center. Uh, the employment center is not currently defined in the ordinance. They are proposing, uh, again, this as a mix of land uses in response to market demand. The introduction of the university center into this area and large employment centers will uh, need the support of neighborhood commercial. Therefore, commercial is being added to the plan. The applicant should be prepared to discuss the types of commercial that they see within their development. The applicant states that it's consistent with using existing facilities to carry out subdivision plans. Uh, traffic and utility studies may be required to determine the capacity of existing infrastructure to support proposed land uses as well as the feasibility of increasing capacity if needed. And this can be addressed in the subdivision planning and zoning that is a process that's yet to come. There is a summary in your information uh, of the land uses. Basically, what we have out there now in the current plan is 150 acres of single-family residential and 6.7 acres of multifamily residential. The applicant is proposing to reduce the single-family residential to 73 acres, increase multifamily to 23.8 acres, and add 15 and a half acres of office institutional uses and 40.8 acres of what would be a mix of uses, including commercial. Because the application accommodates future land uses and proposed developments would be consistent with the physical characteristics of surrounding neighborhoods, staff is recommending approval of the future land use amendment and encourages the applicant to address your comments as well as staff regarding land use transitions and the infrastructure required to support such a large-scale development. Rezoning and subdivision petitions will more closely address those issues. Um, staff has not received any calls on this application, and that concludes staff report. Thank you, Steve. Any questions for staff? Mr. Chair, I have a question regarding the terminology of uh, employment centers, and I read the analysis there. Um, what would what would, an what would an employment center look like? Well, it is um, a mix of retail, office, and residential type uses so that the people living in the area could also work there and do their shopping. And it becomes a, a mixed use in the true sense that probably the appropriate zoning for that would be planned development. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes, Ken. Uh, Steve, the two streets that this property borders, would they be considered minor or major arterial roadways? These are section line roads. I believe they would be major arterials. Major? Major. Thank you. That's thus the limited access. Any other questions for Steve? Thank you, Steve. Is the uh, petitioner here? Good evening. Steve Van Buskirk, 5101 South Nevada Avenue. Uh, thanks for having me tonight. Uh, kind of go through a few more details, I guess, on what our, our plan is up here. Uh, we, bought, we bought this property in the spring, and uh, once we got up on top of it, and looked over the city and just realized how nice of our property it is. Uh, we really wanted to try to, you know, do a nice blend of, of, of a development on this whole property. You know, one thing that we've had success with uh, down at the Bridges Project, down at 57th and Western, kind of seen a mixed-use facility. Um, you know, that's actually uh, a little bit on the small side in the sense that we couldn't incorporate some of the, um, you know, the multifamily. Um, we had one uh, twin home development, I think it was uh, 16 units, you know, back there in the corner. But we like to continue on with that. We've had good success down there. We like what we saw. Uh, this plan, this concept plan that you see in front of you, um, kind of fell out of that. You know, we've got, um, you're asking, Ken was asking about, um, you know, are these are major arterials or, or minors. You know, they're, um, they're major arterials, and the new access standards are going to be quarter mile access to these two streets. Um, and that's, that's where you see it in the, the marks there in the red. Um, you know, that's, that's where we're going to get in and out of this project. Uh, so that's, that was kind of our starting point. And then the half mile, the half mile lines are going to be the new access points. You know, the whole idea here is that 300 by 300 corner 
is you know the thing of the past. You know, you guys have approved a lot of those over the years, but you know that's we're we're moving into a, a new era of, of uh, higher speed uh, roadways on the on the section lines for limited access and keep the traffic moving. Uh, so as we we look we looked at those things the you know the the, the land and uh, you know those those limited access points and some of the other topography issues and just the area in general we think that there's a real opportunity out here to you know, really develop the neighborhood you know I'm, I've heard it more as a neighborhood commercial than employment center I guess but you know we you know there's there's a there's a lot of housing out there um, it hasn't really you know totally taken off like some other areas of town. You know, but what we're what we want to do is try to encourage the whole package, you know, and and you almost have to do that on your own property now because these these higher speed roadways, you're not going to have pedestrian traffic going across Marion Road. It's just not going to happen. Uh, so what we want to do is down there in the corner, which we're showing as commercial because that's the way uh, you can't show it as mixed use. We talked about that. You just can't show it because the way the ordinance is written to modify the 2015 plan. That's why it's a big red C4 corner because that's what you have to do at this point, um, you know. But if we have that mixed use down there in the corner, if you look at the concept plan, you know, people can live up on the hill. They, they can live in the apartments, which is going to be Kitty Corner across from that, re, you know, the uni University Center, which we think is a big opportunity for a lot of people living. You know, but they can, you know, go down to the corner and they can um, shop there. Uh, they can work there. You know, people will be living down there. Uh, so we're going to mix all that, all those things together. Uh, a planned development is where we're heading for that mixed use corner where the red is at. Uh, but, you know, we just, that's the next step. You know, that's next month. I'll be back talking about the same thing. So, um, you know, so that, that's, that's kind of the general concept of where we came from. Uh, a couple things, you know, uh, you know, you can see actually on that drawing also there's a big dark line kind of following the, the orange there. There's a pretty major drainage way. We're working with the developer to the north. Uh, to maybe do uh, the detention cell that will service both of us because we're there's a pipe going underneath Marion Road there and you know it's a natural spot and if you drove out there happen to drive actually you can see in that area a little bit too you can see the waterway in that aerial um, you know we can incorporate that detention cell into our design rather than having you know the, the traditional detention square detention cell that doesn't really look like a lot so we want to try and incorporate that in and and manipulate that as, and make it into a feature rather than just detention. Um, and we've got the same condition if um, if you go back to the, the, yeah, there's the waterway right there. If you go back to the, the uh, color map, the amendment map, we've got that purple. Uh, the reason that doesn't go straight through is because there's a detention cell needed in our southwest corner out there. You know, so the, you know, the roadway system, if you look at the concept map, yeah, right there, that's why it does a, a bend to the north because we're going to have detention cell there also. Uh, you know, we've um, I think that's kind of the, the general plans. We actually worked on um, uh, the uh, subdivision plan a little bit today. We're actually looking at taking 54th Street North, which is our northern boundary. We've been working closely with the other developer to the north, and I think we're going to uh, bring back or we will be bringing back a plan to run 54th Street North into a T intersection. So that first road closest to Marion Road uh, will go north and south, and we'll what we're trying to do is, you know, essentially it's a traffic calming device, not to, you know, you know, let that um, that traffic into the subdivision, so that you know the people can come down the hill to go to the. Steve, I'm out you're of time. probably getting into too much okay, detail for future okay. land use amendment. Okay, but, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we appreciate uh, what it appears you're uh, attempting to do here. And if it's okay, I'll ask the commission for uh, questions. Absolutely. If you'll stay, stay up here for a minute. Any questions of Steve regarding the land use amendment? Mr. Chair, I do have a quick question. So, so understanding that employment centers aren't part of our current definition, um, you're talking about the area that's now designated as red as commercial. Is that, that's what you're calling an employment center or what we hope to call someday an employment center? That's the, that's the area that you're designating for that right and it's a mixed use correct yep. yeah yeah okay. absolutely it's a mixed use facility generally that you know you've been hearing about it the 50 percent commercial uh 30 percent office 20 percent multi you know multi-family residential so that mix in town would the bridges be the closest thing that we have to an employment center concept or is there anything else that is close to that mix 
Because the Bridges Center doesn't quite get there in terms of yeah. the residential mix, but that, is that kind of close? That, not, not for residential no. mix. I mean, we've got 22 acres down there, um, and I think there's maybe two and a half acres of, of uh, you know, residential, you know, down there. You know, and then, and then we wish we had more because it kind of gives you that baseline of people, you know, shopping and hanging around and the activity. So we wish it, we wish we would have had more down there. So maybe it's more a question for staff. Do we have anything that currently sort of is near that employment center definition? No, we do not. But if you look at the map that's up there, if you look at the northeast corner versus the northwest corner, mm -hmm. it's the same concept. If you look at that northeast corner, you see there's a little red commercial corner there, and there's some office, there's some apartments, there's some single family. Okay. It has the same traffic pattern where you see the loop road that goes in a circle, so you got the half moon. Yep. They're going to do the same type of development. We're just not going to paint the developers in the box and say you have to build into this polygon and this polygon and this polygon. The numbers are still generally going to be the same as that northeast corner. But do they have to put the commercial in that corner, or they can they move it to the middle and maybe put the apartments in the corner, or the office? That's what they'll decide to do as they develop it and bring their zoning in. Okay. But at the land use stage, we don't need to see that. Sure. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. So, Jeff. Please. Looking at that red square across the street to the east, yes, is that a street going into that development? No, that's right? a 300 by 300 foot square corner that never got built. So that road is not there. There's not the, their first entry into that is the, back a quarter. Is the, the one that Shauna just drove? That's the first road. And there's a drainage way. And there's not a road to that commercial or that office. How would you access that commercial? You can't. You'd go, if they tried to develop it, you'd go up through the single family neighborhood and the lady left, or you'd have them driving through the residential neighborhood back to that commercial, which we are opposed to. So we'd rather them not do that and try to come up with a mixed use employment center. Well, it's not Steve's deal, but I just happened to notice that. We've noticed it for a long time. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Any other questions for Steve? Steve, I, I was glad to hear you say that this 40 acres, although it's a land use designation, is not 40 acres of pure commercial property. No, all I of our that's been explained to everybody well. Yeah, that's all of our discussions. You know, we're looking for that mixed use. We're just not sure how it's all going to blend together in the final product. But that's that. Those kind of percentages are what the discussions have been. I think this is really the first time, Ken, that uh, in the recent past where we've seen these large blocks of commercial based on today's land use plan uh, with the uh, restricted access uh, where someone's actually talking about uh, a concept that responds to those very, I guess, challenges or opportunities. So I, uh, I hope that you'll work with somebody with, with a lot of talent to put this together because it has the potential to be the first employment center uh, that actually uh, responds to the things that we've been discussing with a lot of developers in the last six months. So, Anything else for Steve? Thank you, Steve. Is there anybody else in the audience that would care to address this item tonight? Hearing none, uh, I would entertain commission action. Item 10. And Mr. Chair, I'll recommend approval of item number 10, the future land use amendment. I'll second. We have a motion and a second for approval of the future land use amendment. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Thank you. Okay. Uh, item 11, staff report. Item 11 is a rezone from agricultural district to the RS2 residential. RC Recreation Conservation District and the Wild Meadows Plan Development District for future residential development and a city park. The purpose and the intent of the RS2 district is to provide areas of residential use with a gross density of generally five to seven dwelling units per acre. The district permits single family dwellings, two family dwellings, and supportive amenities such as community f facilities as parks, playgrounds, schools, libraries, and churches. 
The application also includes a neighborhood park in the RC Conservation District, and this is to provide open space and natural areas for recreation. The Plan Development District is uh, provided to in increase public review for development projects, and that is also provided. The new Plan Development District and the zoning regulations associated with the Meadows Planned, or excuse me, Wild Meadows Planned Development District is included in your staff report. Uh, the site is located midway between East 6th Street and East Madison Street, uh, east of Dubuque Avenue. The site is currently generally uh, characterized by rolling hills and undulating ter terrain. The proximity to schools, parks, churches, and on-sale alcohol establishments includes Washington High School located one half mile to the southwest. The plan incorporates a neighborhood park. Messiah New Hope Church is located to the west, and there is no on-sale establishments in the proximity. Because the application meets the intent of the comprehensive plan for residential and park development, staff does recommend approval of the rezoning. And that concludes staff report. We will have uh, later on the agenda the preliminary subdivision plan so we can talk about streets and lots and blocks and layout, that kind of thing. So we'll get into more detail of that later. Thank you, Shauna. Any questions for Shauna? Thank you. Is the petitioner here this evening? Good evening. My name is Justin Banworth. I represent Parapasu Companies, 4999 France Avenue South, Suite 248, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55410. Um, as Shauna had stated, we, we had changed a couple things around from last month um, when we were looking at this item. Um, based on the 2015 plan, we were set to identify a park location, which we have done on the west edge of the property. Uh, we met a couple different times with planning as well as the Parks Department to come up with the most optimal, I guess, location. It's a very flat surface relative to the rest of uh, the terrain that you had seen on the previous uh, topography, <clears throat> which was laid out. What we tried to do there is identify a space that accommodates a large open playing field, a practice field, possibly for baseball or football, something of that nature, as well as um, you know, playground equipment and uh, some sort of park shelter. Uh, we also uh, went through in at, on the southern portion of this property. We had originally called for just a straight RA1 zoning. We have uh, changed that on recommendations from Shauna and planning staff, as well as some of the comments that we received from you all last uh, last month. And what we have done is imposed a couple of different building um, material restrictions, as well as uh, imposed a landscaping buffer uh, against the homes on the west edge of that uh, zoning area. That, that area would include a 50-foot buffer, and then we've also um, stated that we'll do one evergreen tree at, I believe it was six feet in height, one every 40 feet, to try and create an additional buffer and to um, somewhat screen that, those homes from whichever type of product we would to uh, put in this this multifamily area. Uh, I guess other than that, the, the remainder of the property is um, single family residential and not a lot has changed there with the exception of, um, I think it's labeled Yankee Circle now based on the park that we've put there. Thank you, Justin. Any questions for Justin regarding item 11? Guess not, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would care to address item 11? Seeing none, commission action. Move for approval on item number 11. Is there a second? I have a second. We have a motion and a second to approve the rezone. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Item 11 passes. Uh, item 12, major amendment. In uh, sub area A and B, Heather Ridge 2, plan development uh, staff report. The applicants and owners are represented by Mike Van Buskirk, uh, 
and it's an 18-acre site, currently vacant, but zoned as the Heather Ridge 2 Plan Development District. Uh, the sub-areas that we're looking at are A and B. The, per the applicant is proposing to adjust the sub-area boundaries to reduce the overall density of development in this PD by reducing the size of sub-area B and increasing the size of sub-area A by the same amount. North of the subject property, there is a drainage way in the agricultural district. South, it's vacant in a commercial, future commercial uh, district, an RD residential district. And then to the east, there's a major drainage way in the agricultural district. And to the west, uh, there will be offices in the Boulder Ridge Estates PD plan development district. The applicable, uh, applicable uh, standards and zoning regulations for subarea B are RA1 residential and for subarea A, RD residential. Located at the northeast corner of the intersection, uh, this is a contained development, a contained subdivision of residential uses by reducing the overall density at this major street intersection. Staff is supporting the concept uh, of altering the subarea boundaries to accomplish that. Secondarily, it does allow the developer of the property, which uh, is a home builder, to um, use the setback requirements of a lesser density zoning district. Uh, plans have been provided to indicate to you the site development of each type of unit he proposes to build on the property, including elevations, landscaping, setbacks, uh, which are going to exceed the minimum uh, required by approximately two feet. Five feet would be the minimum required. The applicant is proposing a typical seven foot side yard setback. Otherwise, the front and rear yard setbacks are equal to what is the minimum uh, required and exceed that also in, in many cases. The architectural design is indicated through building elevations, materials are indicated, and uh, that pretty much summarizes the um, Development, the type A twin home units with the walkout lower level and decks on the main level are located on lots 1 to 13, block 1. And type B twin home units with two stories and main level patios are located on lots 1 to 10, block 2. If you have any questions about the typical site plan development for either one of those unit types, you can ask the developer who is here this evening. Because the application results in a reduction of overall density of this Planned development and otherwise conforms to subarea regulation. Staff is recommending approval of the major amendment. Uh, we've had no other calls, and that concludes staff report. Steve, did we see this uh, last month? We uh, saw last month a request for a minor amendment to the existing subareas to reduce the side yard setback required for the development of the same project. Uh, that uh, request was denied. Uh, on the basis of um, the Planning Commission's desire to limit the number of setback reductions coming to before them, for that purpose only. Uh, here, the request has been, is being reformulated in the sense that uh, the sub-area boundaries are changing to not allow the higher density in the sub-area that you wanted the minor amendment for. Uh, so it's actually doing a better job of accommodating uh, a lower density. Uh, last time it was a request for a minor amendment, which minor amendments could have kept coming back to you for other things. This way, we're putting it in, into an underlying zoning district that should address all of the things that the developer or the home builder is going to run into in the development of those lots. The typical site plans that you see are pretty close, I'm sure, uh, but each and every one of those lots does have to come into the city for a building permit review and approval. And we know that there are times when the, when the uh, platting and the engineering and the staking and the construction uh, is less than adequately coordinated and they run into problems. There's less chance of that happening by changing the sub-area boundaries to go to conforming to an underlying zoning district that the home builder is comfortable with. Any questions of Steve? Mr. Chair, Steve, when I look at one of his uh, floor plans, it shows a deck off to the side. That seven-foot boundary, uh, that deck would have to be off 
that property line by seven feet. Uh, decks are allowed to encroach into setbacks by a certain amount according to the zoning ordinance. For example, in the rear yard, I believe we can, with an upper level deck, encroach by two feet. You saw one of those applications uh, here last month, I believe. I think they were asking for two feet. And I think oh, they were asking for two feet and would not be allowed to encroach at an upper level. But on a lower level, a patio or deck on the lower level or main level of a unit is allowed to encroach. And I could two get feet. that. Uh, I believe it is two feet. I can bear for it. I just wanted to be sure that the builder was aware of that. Yeah. Again, they do have to come in for a building permit application that conforms to the underlying zoning district, and if that's not allowed, it won't be allowed. Thank you, Steve. Any other questions for Steve? Steve, is this plan any truly any less dense than the plan we saw a month ago? Uh, again, the plan that we saw a month ago is basically the same request for density, mm -hmm. uh, but it was trying to fit a lower density project into what into a sub area that allows a higher density. By allowing a higher density, that sub area required greater setbacks, and the developer was being penalized uh, for putting in a lower density. Mm -hmm. By changing the sub area boundaries, again, we're allowing the developer's plan to conform to the lower density requirements. So what we did was we just took the same site plan and moved it into a, a different classification, a different set of rules. So That's correct. That really didn't. We're Hopefully, still going to see these units the same distance apart. Basically, yes. But now, at your request, the developer has provided additional information concerning the design of the units the site planning of the units, elevations, floor plans, things that you indicated at the last meeting uh, you would like to see in a request of this yeah. type. Anything else uh, for Steve? Okay. Thank you, Steve. Hmm? Is the petitioner here? Mike Van Buskirk, 5101 South Nevada. Mm -hmm. um, that's correct. But what we believe what we're doing here tonight is 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 doing this in the, in the proper manner as far as zoning goes. I think the longer history on this that you should probably all be aware of is, uh, geez, many years ago now we went we uh, worked this through with with the neighborhood out there. The concern was density in in this area as far as the apartments coming. We were allowed 176 units out there under the present PD that's approved and, and existing. This plan would take us to 104. The uh, hitch, if you will, that we ran into, um, I, and I should say the product that's going to be out there is going to be high-end twin homes for, for sale units. The setbacks will be the same as Heather, this residential Heather Ridge that we've got across the, across the street. And what, what we ran into is by lowering the density, we ran into setbacks of 10, you know, the 10 feet instead of 7. That's the problem that we ran into. And we, we understood procedurally wise this was was the way that uh, we should should address this we did have neighborhood meetings on this there um, I believe only four neighbors showed up I've got the sign-in list there everyone was was and you know, we had people from both Heather Ridge that weren't there at, at the very beginning when we started and people on across the road to the south there were no pro, no uh, no objections from the neighborhood at all Open any, to questions. Any, thank you Mike any uh, questions for Mike Mike, so you mentioned these are just like what's up the road, basically. The, um, the setbacks are like what's on across the road and stuff. The, yeah. twi the twin home product here is uh, actually a step up from what's up the road. Right. But these, the builders doing this, the, the ones in the outer ring will be the same ones as what we did in the bridges down there. Yep. And uh, a little more of a mix of product, but it'll, it'll be nice high-end twin homes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Mike? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else that would care to address this item? Commission action. I'll move for approval of item 12. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the major amendment. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 
Thank you. Okay. Item 13, conditional use permit in the S Institutional District to allow office use for Bright Start home visiting nurses. Steve. This is uh, basically an office development. Uh, the purpose of the applicant, uh, who is Dennis Dugard Children Home Society, uh, is to develop a office space for mental health support staff and administrative staff in an existing building on the Children's Home Society campus. And if you have been out there, it's a, it's a nice campus off to the side of the street uh, with its own driveway back in and, and development around parking and so on. This particular uh, project is located at a corner of the campus and is accessed off a side street across from uh, school. Existing land use is a former foster care residence on the campus. Based on the floor plans provided, uh, minimum off-street parking requirements for the building, uh, which is about 4,000 square feet, is 13 spaces. And the applicant does provide us with a parking lot plan for 20 spaces, including one van accessible, if necessary, to satisfy the off-street parking requirements. The applicant stated that they are looking into the possibility of using existing uh, campus parking to satisfy the parking needs of this particular project, and perhaps they can address that with you this evening. Otherwise, they do show a plan for parking improvements that would satisfy the zoning requirements, which they are going to have to do for their building permit. Also, the uh, screening of the new parking lot, if it is provided, is required only for adjacent residential uses, and there's only one place where that happens, and it's probably off to the side corner, be the north, west corner of the parking lot if, if that's necessary also would also be uh, coming in with the building permit. Also with the building permit review we'd be looking at the landscaping and they do re are required to put in the landscaping uh, uh, that's required for development of street frontage including one tree for every 50 foot of street frontage and the screening of the par parking lot if they choose to do it that way with landscaping and also one tree for every six parking spots, whichever is greater. Because the application is compatible with existing uses on campus and uh, is a current development that is actually probably going to reduce the amount of traffic going to it since the nurses uh, will be coming in and leaving the site for the day and then only coming back to pick up their vehicles. Um, it should be an improvement of traffic situation. and. The extent of the work proposed uh, requires a complete plan check by zoning and building services staff is recommending approval of the conditional use permit. We've had no calls on that on this application and that concludes staff report. Thank you, Steve. Any questions for Steve? Uh, Mr. Chair, <coughs> Steve, you lost me there for a minute. Are you saying this plan as they've laid out is showing 20 parking spots? That's what they intend on doing? That is what they uh, included in their initial application to us, just to show us that they can meet the parking requirement. Uh, they indicated to me during the process of review that they would like to look at the possibility of using other parking on campus uh, to satisfy that requirement. Uh, perhaps they can answer that question tonight. That looks like a fairly good distance from that parking lot to this particular building. I asked them to be careful about that, uh, to make sure that the nurses walking back and forth from parking to their office would, uh, would be okay with that. So this, this could be changed by using an existing parking lot if, the, if this commission felt comfortable with that? That's correct. Thank you, Steve. Any other questions for Steve? Thanks, Steve. Is the petitioner here? Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. Uh, my name is Dennis Dugard. I'm the executive director of Children's Home Society. We're at 801 North Sycamore here in Sioux Falls. Uh, as the map indicated, the parcel that we're looking at is on the very southwest corner of our 28 acres. It's an existing building that's been used as a foster home in the past. It's vacant right now. Um, United Way and the state of South Dakota have agreed that we could take over the Bright Start nurse visiting program that's currently operating out of the Department of Health offices, and we would like to do that. Um, 
a, a cost-effective method of officing these nurses would be to use our vacant building rather than leasing some office space downtown. We looked at the current zoning after we'd submitted the conditional use permit, and I believe we'd actually qualify under current zoning as a medical office. The occupants of the office would be eight visiting nurses, a supervising nurse, a receptionist, and a mental health professional. However, just to be certain that we're, we have our uh, bases covered, we want to go forward with this conditional use permit. Um, I, I must say that the planning staff was very helpful. They did indicate it would be acceptable for me to come and ask for permission to consider using the existing property. If you look at what's showing on the screen right now, uh, this very afternoon I parked uh, at the lower right-hand corner of that lot and walked to the building uh, to the north of it. That is what our staff are do doing right now. As you can see, the buildings are clustered to the north and west, and most of the parking is to the south and east. And so all of our staff are making that walk every day, uh, summer and winter. Uh, what we would hope you might consider allowing us to do is to construct a path from the existing parking to the building so the nurses would have a direct path um, to the building. If that's not acceptable, we'll build the parking that's in the submitted plans. Uh, the reason why we're uh, hopeful that you might allow us to, to use existing parking is that we don't see this location as a good long-term location for the nurses. We'd eventually like to relocate them back in the downtown central core area where they're a little more centrally located uh, from which they could visit the uh, expectant mothers to which they're dispatched every day. So uh, this is a good short-term solution for the next year or two, and depending on financing and, and availability of space and whether we can manage the money, we're hoping eventually to move them back downtown. We have visited with the county uh, just very preliminarily with Hugh Grogan about the possibility of the new uh, center that just opened up. It does have some raw space. There's some possibility we could get some grant funding to improve the raw space and maybe we get a, a quid pro quo of a free rent if we could get grant money to improve the space and the county gets something and we get something out of that deal. I don't know if that's workable, but that's uh, one uh, solution that we hope to pursue. Uh, other than that, we, uh, if the commission decides we should put in the parking, we'll put it in. Uh, whatever landscaping screening is necessary, we'll do that. Uh, we need to plant at least one more tree, a uh, couple trees, three trees. We'll do that, no problem. Uh, we routinely plant 10 trees every year at Children's Home just as a process of gradually foresting that property. And so if you would look at that map 20 years ago, you'd see there are uh, more than 200 trees more than were on that property when we purchased it. I'm sure more than that. So uh, again, I appreciate the opportunity to address you and answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Dennis. Any questions for Dennis? Uh, Mr. Chair, I have one regarding the um, existing property. If you use the existing parking, would there be a safe route for people to walk? I mean, I don't know what time of day or night that people would have to walk that. It looks like quite a distance. We would we would put in a path from the from the I guess you'd call it the lower lot directly to the house to provide a safe path. Dennis, isn't there a water drainage area? Yes, we'd right have to put there? a slight a small bridge. Okay. But some of that area is is a, a very shallow drainage. It's it's literally mowed. It's not a ravine kind of situation. Some of it is, and so the most direct route would require a little bridge. What what would you think the distance is? For? It's about 370 feet. So really, not any more than they're currently walking if they're going to the north house from this lower parking. Right. In fact, we have uh, the upper left, as I'm looking at the picture, is our school. And so our teachers are packed. Uh, some of our teachers will sometimes park in the lower lot and walk to the school, which is probably about twice the distance. And I've so, noticed some of your staff actually walking to the campus, those that live nearby. Yes, that's right. Shirley Leinbach, Rick Weber. Yeah. Yeah. Dennis, could you explain to us the use of this building during the day? Are you saying there's no one that, no one at this building? 
from eight to five? At present, there is uh, the building's vacant. If we are allowed to occupy it as we propose, uh, there will be a supervising nurse and a receptionist there. Uh, they would probably be in the building more than not during the office hours. The other eight nurses and the mental health professional would be out of the building more often than they're in. In other words, again, the, the program uh, is designed to visit expectant mothers, uh, first-time mothers. The ideal uh, mother is an at-risk mother within the first 28 weeks of pregnancy. She begins the program. The nurse uh, visits. It's a voluntary program. The nurse visits free of charge, counsels against uh, alcohol use, tobacco use, counsels in favor of good nutrition, prenatal visits, aims for a good birth outcome and then continues the visits, albeit less frequently, until the child turns age three. And so that's where the name Bright Start comes from. And it's a proven uh, model that's uh, uh, copied from Denver, uh, the Denver area. And we're with the state of South Dakota, I guess you might call us a licensee of sorts. We use their curriculum and their model. Um, so the nurses would come. Uh, drop their car, pick up a pool car, and make these visits. It may be that they wouldn't stop at the office at all. Depending on if they have something to do in the office, they may just drop their car at the lot, pick up a pool car at the lot, and then drive away. Dennis, do any of your clientele ever come to an office like this? They do. It would be, it would be fairly infrequent, though, because this, again, it's, it's aimed at at-risk moms. Uh, we want to make it very convenient for them, and so the model is primarily visits to them in the home. Then the, the nurse can do checkups on the baby uh, or toddler, as the case may be, or checkups on the expectant mom in their home. What do you envision the use of this building in two years from now? We if probably, you guys were to move out. Thank you for that question. We probably would revert to a residential type use again. In fact, we're planning on no reconfiguration of the interior whatsoever. So if we were to consider approving this on a two-year basis, uh, you wouldn't have a problem with that if we were to allow the parking out there? That would be fine with me. I'm not sure how it would be to everybody else just yet. But. Well, we should probably, uh, once, Dennis, you, Dennis. once we've... Uh, finish the questions with Dennis as staff, but I believe that as a part of uh, uh, this campus, there's probably a parking requirement for the overall campus, and that um, uh, if that's satisfied, if there's enough parking for the whole campus as is, there's probably no requirement for this additional parking in terms of uh, zoning code. That's correct. Uh, the residential use was a higher use as far as yeah. parking requirements go. The office is less, and their particular program is way less. You could either tie it to a time frame or you could tie it to this particular program if you like. Yeah. If it goes back to residential use, that's an allowed use, and the existing parking is satisfied. Thank you, Steve. Do Any more questions? Oh, excuse Do me. we need a stipulation, Steve, or can we just approve it as it is since it does fit within the parking plan of the whole uh, complex? The applicant has indicated they're agreeable to a time <coughs> limit if you wish to put one in. Um, otherwise, uh, staff could recommend that you uh, stipulate approval for this program only. Like we do for a lot of uh, conditional, other conditional use permits. Uh, then when the program changes and they go back to an allowed use, the existing parking is satisfied. Any other questions for Steve? Any other questions for Dennis? Hearing none, are there, is there a motion regarding the approval of this uh, or this conditional use permit? Uh, Mr. Chair, I would move for approval of item number 13, not including the required parking, and it would be for this use only. Thank you. Is there a second? Yes. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Thank you. Uh, the conditional use of 
Uh, permit is approved. Uh, let's move to item 14, which is another conditional use permit in the C2 General Commercial District to allow motor vehicle display and sales. Thank you. The location is at 4201 East 10th Street. Uh, the applicant is proposing to occupy an existing building and parking lot for display and sales of motor vehicles. This is a, a vacant property, a former Chapel Hill funeral home. No changes are proposed to the site plan or the building uh, plan on the site. The applicant has provided us with uh, information about uh, signage and landscaping that would be required in order to screen the parking lot from adjacent residential uses. Also, they've indicated adding two uh, parking lot lights on poles similar to what's there now, but also meeting the lighting standards for downward throw and uh, glare control. Of the 36 available spaces for parking, uh, the applicant has assigned 11 of them to customer employee parking and the remaining 25 to vehicle display as required by the current parking requirements for this property. We have a letter in the file that uh, indicates the zoning has approved uh, the amount of 11 spaces as required for the property as it is now a commercial property. Remaining spaces can be used for display and sales. Again, the applicant has indicated uh, that they will provide the required screening of the parking lot and provide the required number of trees planted in the front yard at the rate of 50 one per 50 foot of frontage or one per six parking spots, whichever is greater. And um, they will be provided in the front yard setback required. The other thing that on the signage that the applicant would address with you this evening if you uh, wish to ask the question is uh, the matter of uh, pennants and uh, flags, other devices that are temporary in nature that you might see in a park uh, car lot uh, because of the proximity of residential development to the property we like to see those located away from those residences and the applicant has agreed to do that we have indicated as uh, a basis for approval then two stipulations as a recommendation from staff that the uh, business signage facing adjacent residential use is prohibited. And then parking lot or parking of vehicles for sale uh, on the residential street East 12th is not allowed. That should address the uh, compatibility of the development with adjacent existing residential uses and staff is recommending approval on that basis. We haven't had any calls and that concludes staff report. Any questions? Thank you, Steve. Is the petitioner here? Good evening. Brent Antonin with Graham Organization, 5000 South Minnesota, Suite 101, representing Brad Dumdi in Autoland. Do you have anything to add, Brent? I don't. I think Steve covered it. I'd be happy to answer any questions. <clears throat> Thank you. Any questions for Brent? Do you have any concerns about the requirement that the signage should stay away from the residential? Not at all. You know, it, it just so happens that we have a unique property that has two, you know, we're, we're on 12th and 10th, but obviously we're going to focus all of the efforts to drive uh, sales traffic in from 10th Street. It's, you know, people driving on 12th are typically going home, that kind of thing, are going to work, and so putting signage there isn't a big deal to us anyway. Any more questions for Brent? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would care to address this item? Seeing none, uh, commission action. Motion for approval on item number 14 with the two stipulations. I second. We have a motion and a second for approval of the conditional use permit with the two stipulations. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Thank you. Okay, item number 15 is the final development plan in sub-area C of Air McKinnon Plan Development District to allow construction of an extended stay hotel. Staff report, please. 
The applicants and owners are represented by Garrett Peters of Air McKinnon Hospital and University Health Center. The size of the property is uh, 1.4 acres approximately. It's in an existing plan development that allows uh, residential uses to remain as they were rezoned into the PD. And this is a situation where some of those residences have been removed and they're proposing a new project. The project is an extended stay hotel. Uh, the architect uh, has presented plans, floor plans, site plan, uh, landscaping plans, uh, everything that is required for review of your final development plan uh, is presented here this evening except for the parking. And we've asked the applicant to address the parking requirements. And later this afternoon, I did receive uh, a plan uh, email that did not get into your addendum. I have it available for the applicant to present to you as a solution to the parking requirement. The applicant is proposing to construct 19 rooms as the extended stay facility. On the subject property, two residence buildings and a welcome center are located on three quarters of this block. Some existing homes will remain until the future when the rest of the block would be built out as an expansion of the facility. Vehicle access is proposed from East 23rd Street and from an existing alley running through the site from East 23rd to East 24th. Pedestrian path improvements are shown from buildings to public sidewalks and indicated in all directions. The hospital has provided staff with a uh, summary of parking that's provided on campus showing an excess of parking uh, available for use on campus, this being a campus use. Uh, it could be included, the parking requirements for this uh, project. However, uh, a location for the par uh, parking requirements were not included with the campus summary, and so the applicant is uh, going to show that to you this evening, what they're proposing. A total of 17 trees are indicated in the front yards based on street frontage. A total of 12 are required, so we've exceeded that. There is a plant material schedule indicating one and three-quarter caliper skyline locust trees uh, being planted. These are single-story residential style commercial buildings with stucco stone and trim board, residential uh, roof pitch and shingle materials. Building height uh, is not indicated, but appears to be residential and less than 45 feet allowed. Floor plans indicate the uh, number of rooms and facilities supporting. The applicant should be prepared to report any neighborhood comments at this public hearing. Because the application is for an allowed use, design is compatible with residential character of the neighborhood and otherwise conforms to PD sub-area regs, staff is recommending approval of the final development plan with one stipulation, parking plan approved by the planning director. Because a parking plan is being presented to you this evening as meeting the requirements, uh, you can keep that same stipulation or if you have any questions about the plan presented, you may approve it with plan is presented. You have a choice there. And that concludes staff report. I've had no calls from the neighborhood. Thank you, Steve. Are there questions for Steve? Steve, uh, Mr. Chair, Steve, not to put you on the spot, but I'm reading here, parking regulations and parking provided hotel or motel parking are five parking spaces <coughs> plus one space for each room or suite. So are we saying at 19 rooms? We'd multiply that times five, and that would be the no, parking no, requirement? No, no, it's five spaces plus one for each room suite. Nineteen and five. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Steve? Thank you, Steve. Uh, is the applicant here? Garrett? I'm Garrett Peters uh, from Vera McKinnon, uh, address 1105 West Eagle Ridge Circle. Uh, I'm here to address any questions. Um, first off, the parking, I guess. We are looking at um, the block to the east on the that picture there, the northwest corner of that block. Um, there's three existing lots that we'll be taking to accommodate the 24 parking that's required. Mm -hmm. 
Any other questions for Garrett? You're, you're talking about in the next block over up on the corner? Yes, that's correct. Right across the street, across 8th uh, Avenue. How will you keep that for the suites only? Um, it'll be signed as such. Okay. Thank you. I know we just approved something similar, but this is a residential facility, more residential than than what we had at Children's Home Society. And I think at night in the wintertime, I mean, that could be a substantial walk from where you're proposing the parking. <coughs> Are there any plans where this existing housing is? Is at some point to consider getting some parking there? Or? Um, well, currently on on the block that we're doing the development, um, we do not own the two properties on the just to no. the northeast of the building. Um, I guess we we do own more of the properties to the south of where we're proposing the parking, and in the not too distant future, we are planning on developing more of that as parking. Any other questions for Garrett? Garrett, I, I I see where Jesse's coming from. Your actual your uh, welcome center is actually about a half block to the east. The property yes. to the uh, where it says East Twenty Third. I'm not sure if that's north or south on this map. Is that existing parking lot for the hospital at this this time? Um, to the top of the page there. On the. Yeah, actually, on the whole north side of that, um, that is all hospital parking. If I was staying there, I didn't care to park in the parking lot you're going to provide and walk the half block. Could I park right across the street in a regular parking lot and not get totally away? Yes, by um, that is not regulated, especially in the evening, um, which is when these people would be there. It would be allowed. Is that Orthopedic Institute? Yes. Any more questions? Thank you, Garrett. Is there anyone else in the audience that would care to address this issue? Seeing none, commission action. I'll move for approval of item 15 with the one stipulation. I second. We have a motion and a second uh, to approve the final development plan with the single stipulation. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Item 16 has been deferred. Item 17 is the preliminary subdivision plan for Wild Meadows Edition. Staff Thank report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The applicant is proposing to create a residential subdivision which includes a neighborhood park. The site is primarily rectangular with undulating topography. Surrounding subdivisions include Richmond and State's 4th edition, Cliff Foss 2nd and 4th editions, Aspen Hills edition, and Canterbury Heights edition. A vicinity map drawn to scale has been provided, as well as notations regarding the legal description stating the acreages. The location of all proposed and existing streets, alleys, and easements, and parks and water courses have been provided. There are two power line easements on both the west and east property boundaries, which are depicted on the plan. The comprehensive plan depicts residential development in a neighborhood park. The applicant has indicated a five-acre neighborhood park on the plan. Staff will continue to work with the applicant regarding access to the park from the north. The planning process accommodates reservation of the land for the neighborhood park, and the capital improvement plan will address improvement cost. Because the preliminary subdivision plan does offer coordination of urban infrastructure and fosters efficient orderly growth, staff does recommend approval of the preliminary plan. And that concludes staff report. Thank you, Shauna. Any questions for Shauna regarding item 17? Is the uh, petitioner present? 
Thank you, Shauna. Uh, I guess I have no further comments, but if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Would you state your name and address again? Oh. Justin Banworth, Parapasu Companies, 4999 France Avenue South, Minneapolis, 55410. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Justin? I guess not. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Is there anyone else in the audience that would care to address this item? Seeing none, commission action. Mr. Chair, I'll move for approval of item number 17. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the preliminary subdivision plan. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Item 18 is an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending <laughs> Appendix B, the zoning ordinance by adding land uses to the neighborhood commercial zoning district. Uh, Shauna. Thank you. The, the Planning Commission has is, is been struggling with the issue regarding retail in neighborhood kind of commercial centers. And should we add retailing into the office district? Um, staff is going coming forward with this zoning ordinance amendment to not allow office or excuse me, commercial land uses in the office district, but resurrecting a, a little known zoning district that we do have on the books called the C1 Neighborhood Commercial District. And the Neighborhood Commercial District is to provide commercial and service areas located on the edge of residential developments, primarily to serve areas within one mile of the development. What this ordinance does is allows retail trade and service, except a restaurant, in this zoning district that would allow uh, establishments that are generally engaged in selling products, goods, or merchandise to the general public for personal and household consumption. The ordinance amendment allows for retail trade and service currently not allowed in the C1 district. Staff notes that res uh, restaurants are not an acceptable use in the C1 because of negative impacts to surrounding properties due to noise, trash, parking, smells, and hours. Because the application does allow for retailing in a neighborhood sensitive context, staff does recommend approval of the zoning ordinance amendment. And that concludes staff report. Any questions for Shauna regarding this amendment? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, Shauna, if this particular <coughs> amendment me. ordinance had been amended, how, would that have been an application for the earlier future land use? Um, conversation on the corner of Benson, Benson Road and Marion. Marion. Uh, because I, it, I've seen the terminology of neighborhood commercial district. Although the, the neighborhood commercial district doesn't allow for residential. And so what they were proposing was a component of residential. Um, this actually has setbacks and uh, requirements for yards similar to the office district. Uh, but it does currently not allow for retailing. So there is a difference. I, I don't, if your question is, would a C1 be, I think there is an opportunity for portions of that bigger commercial site on the future land use amendment to be C1, um, but probably not the whole thing. Right. I was just wondering if that would be a component of that piece that we were looking at. It there. certainly could be. And the, the difference with the C1 is that the buildings are smaller because it, it is supposed to attract just the people in the neighborhood within a mile, not uh, big strip malls or uh, anything like that. The, the zoning ordinance amendment would allow retailing if the building was less than 3,000 square feet. If it was greater than that, they'd need a conditional use permit. So Shauna, I think to um, our situation on Cliff and I think it's Quail Crest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if if this would have applied versus an O zoning, that might have opened that up for a little bit. Different I views. I don't think those neighbors are supportive of retailing at that in that case. Um, but I would not be surprised if if the current owner did try to uh, request this zoning district. I don't know that it's going to fix anything. But down in there, the future, but. instead of having an O, a but to an RS, we would maybe use this feature. Right, exactly. We could use this. Then the expectations of the neighbors would be that there would be a retailing component allowed, 
with bigger setbacks and that kind of stuff if this had been in place sure. prior to, sure. you know. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Why Shana. hasn't this been used, Shauna? That's a good question. I really, I really don't know. I think a lot of the C1 stuff is in older areas that would not accommodate the setbacks that are required, 25-foot setback. Um, the one that I, comes to my mind that's currently in the C1 zoning district is the old Assam Drug Store. Yeah. Um, and if you tried to put in a 25-foot <coughs> setback on that property, it wouldn't work because there wouldn't be any area left for parking. But I think in development areas, there's certainly, uh, it could be conducive to pr providing for some more commerce for neighborhood services. Sean, I, think, I, th I think in that area, that Quail Run, this wouldn't work on an existing building. It's not the size of the space, it's the size of the total building. I think it has to be 5,000 square feet or, or under. Correct. Uh, 5,000? They do have a vacant piece of ground. Okay. They do have a vacant piece of ground up there that something like this could work for, depending on what size building they put on that site. Right, and if they wanted to do a bigger building, then it would require a conditional use permit and you can put conditions on there that would make it more neighborhood sensitive if it was a larger structure. Thank you. I, I don't think that I was looking to, to substitute this, <coughs> but maybe have this as an additional choice. <coughs> Correct, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep, I, I, I was just trying to, in my mind, think of areas that we've had some challenges that um, it would have served as a better. And now we have some options. Yes. I think this, is, this will be especially useful in, because a lot of what we're seeing are these developers coming in with plans for a total little neighborhood, you know, apartments, single family, and a small shopping area. So that's probably going to make that a lot easier. Mm -hmm. That's the hope. Any question? Any more questions for Shauna? Shauna, you're also the petitioner this evening. <coughs> any more questions? Is there anyone from the audience that would care to address item 18? Seeing none, uh, commission action. I'll move for approval of item 18. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to uh, approve the zoning ordinance amendment. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Item 19 is uh, adjournment. Is there a motion for adjournment? I move to adjourn. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Thank you. It's going to be very interesting to see what the Bear Buskers come back with. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. I hope they can do it. I hope somebody does it.